Hi guys. Um. <laughs> what? Oh. Y'all interested in Visby armor? <laughs> I guess you all pretty much were inspired by the axe. Well. I think I do actually have one piece. Let's take a look here. And. Ah, here we are. Introducing guys, the Visby coat of plates. Now, um, unlike uh, the other type of armor, this one is slightly different compared to the other brand. I, because this one's slightly heavier. And this is a big problem with that. Let me show you all what I mean. This looks a little bit for the other coat of plates than this one. Ah, it's mainly this piece. I got a pretty much well actually forge this to the body. Now this is kind of the big problem because it doesn't uh, like to do that. Now though, a little bit of extra protection is that it also has a grain protectant down here. Now, it does have slightly better steel. Now though, uh, this one though will be a lot more difficult to put on. I hear you already tell me why. Well, it's because of the straps on the back. Okay? Well, unlike it hanging, this one, now you have to have it hang from these. This is going to be the hard part. <laughs> and yes, this is technically what uh, y'all might think of the William Wallace armor from that Braveheart film, but technically it's not. Or maybe it is. Artistry. Now, Unlike other types, this one actually has these flinged flaps here, of which by this point in time in history, eh, this type of armor was technically obsolete by the time of the Battle of Visby. Why so? Well, I'll leave a link down below to tell, talk about the battle about that historical field, in which this is copied from the battlefield. So in other words, this is historically designed. So, yeah, this is going to be a problem though, for me to put on by myself. Anyways, y'all, why don't we just bit, get back to the pillow trick, and I'll show you why. Alright, y'all, now you can see where I am. Uh, now, this is going to be the kind of hard part. That's just kind of pinching me all over. Ow. Ow. <clears throat> Note to self, get a regular foot soldier's bring and bind, because this is kind of hard to put on. Okay. Yeah. Now I can just tell where the hell the flap is. You see how hard this is? So, okay. Now comes the hard part. Huh. This time I only have to deal with one strap across. Uh, yeah. This part is going to be the hard part. Okay. the hardest part of them all. Okay. Just gotta find the ah. I have to pull this down further.
Now we can see why this was probably a pain in the ass for a long foot soldier to put on. Okay. There we go. Now that is a lot closer, so that makes it a lot easier. On. Bloody hell. There we go. A little help would be useful if it wouldn't be too much to ask. Okay, where's the damn hole? You don't make a sex joke. Now, as you all can see, this is pretty much the hardest part of the armor. Okay. Now, let me just try and find this hole. There we go. Now, why don't I get to standing up and show you what I'm talking about, of how hard this is to wear. One, two, go, 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 go. <sighs> okay, now, as you all can see, this is what the armor would look like. Um, as you all saw so from the back straps here, I'm trying to get those in frame for you all. This bottom one here is what technically holds it together. It could technically be a little more easy to put on. However, the problem is I need someone else to help me put it on. And that's a little problem. Now, this armor is historical accurate to its design. Uh, you can probably use these for cultic warfare reenactments. I uh, so cult here have heard that uh, many people have actually tried their best to, well, to historical accurate reenactment fighting in these. And I have heard that it's kind of like moving like a turtle. In other words, I'm technically just moving like this. In fact, if I was to say get my Dane axe, for example, I can't technically go into full grip at the moment because it's kind of a pain in the ass. Now this can stop attacks from an egg, a little bit, I'm not going to try using it on myself. Now, if you're all wondering, okay, what about your shoulders? These don't have any metal, this is just rawhide. So in other words, they're technically just, uh, yeah, a big walking turtle. You can see why this armor is very hard to move in. Uh, this is why I'm a foot soldier, not a cavalry. Because this type of armor I'm not used to moving in. Because it's. Even if I get used to it, I'm my arms probably won't. Now, I can easily move them up, but with every time I move them up, the armor just wants to move up as well, so that's a big problem. <sighs> yeah, we can see why this is kind of a big problem in history books. No. But by the time of the Pakoda, this coat of plates known as the battle at the Battle of Bisbee were used, this type of armor was obsolete. But I will leave links down below for y'all so that way y'all can understand more about the history about it. But I do love the coat of plates or brigandine, whatever you want to pronounce it as, because it is good armor. 
but I rather prefer the infantry design that would be meant for mercenaries later on in life. This is still heavy as hell. Because just using this is still a pain. Because if I'm supposed to move, see my problem here. This is meant for knights, nobility. This is not meant for a foot soldier. If a foot soldier got this on the battlefield, he probably just stole it. Now though, I hear you all day, but Timber, why don't you try it the other way around? No, that won't work at all. In fact, it would just look either stupid or in the process, how is it supposed to protect my chest? Now, they do try their best at making this, which is kind of surprising. I will also leave links down below for y'all to, if y'all want to buy this type of armor. Now, uh, as I state, you're going to need someone else to help you into this armor. You can't just put it on. I see you all realize how hard it took. I think I need to take a knee very soon. But, yes, this armor is historically accurate to its point. Now, if y'all want to run around for a good white design, this is it. Now, as I stated, you're going to have to uh, mold it to your body. Reason being, um, the front design plates here are so, well, flat, as y'all can see. Uh, I need to keep molding this to my body, which will be a pain in the ass, because right now it's just a, just a flat keyboard. So yeah, I guess got to flatten it. How so? Well, you can easily just stand on it if you want. But yeah. Some people I've seen have actually used the weight system. In other words, they technically have taken pounds of weights and just left them on the front chest while they technically hoist the thing up. I'm not certain if that works or not. But yeah. Anyways, guys, this has been Templar. Hopefully you found this helpful. Let me know in the comments below. If you all want me to cover any type of armor and history or type of gear and such, or technically battles, and as well, also like, subscribe, and as well, click the bell button for more notifications. Also, check out our Facebook page, that way you call, can be notified of actually what future intents of the channel. Anyways, guys, this has been Templar. Have a nice day. Now, can somebody please get me out of this armor? Please! I need to get out of this. Anybody?